I'm Justin Davis, and this is Drone Camps RC. <laughs> Hey guys, welcome back to the Camps channel. I'm Justin Davis and I have some cool new stuff to show you here today from FPV Model. Now, FPV Model has been in contact with me for quite some time. I used to buy stuff from them years ago and if you don't know about FPV Model, now you do because guess what? These guys have tons of gear on their site. They have a really deep, rich, long history with FPV so uh, they also make a really awesome flying wing and you guys know I'm super into that one and that one's called the there wing it's actually like a smaller 30 inch model around 30 inch and it's, it has all kinds of bays on it already set up for your FPV gear to go on it and some carbon fiber stuff to go along with it now you spell that one T-H-E-E are and I'm going to show that one coming up on the channel but today we're going to show you some cool stuff from them we have the Betaflight F4 flight controller here that is a really hot flight controller right now we have some Betaflight 32-bit BL Heli 35 amp ESCs for your 5 inch racers uh, this combo right here would be awesome on the course and I have a super awesome little micro here from those guys to show you. This is the X Racer. So let's start out with this Betaflight F4 and then we'll move on to the ESCs. And then lastly, we'll check out the X Racer from those guys and see what this one is like compared to some of the other micros you guys have seen on the channel. Does it stack up to the other micros on the market? We'll see. Now myself and everybody else, we're huge fans of Betaflight and this is the F4 branded Betaflight flight controller. So this is pretty sweet. It also has the FPV model logo on there. So they must be in association with this product. They might have developed it for them. Pretty sweet. There's the flight controller itself and we'll see what else we get in the box here. Get a little connector for your receiver if you wanted to wire up some pins on there, but I didn't get any pins with this one. So let's go ahead and zoom in, take a little closer look at this board. It looks pretty complex and actually really nicely soldered up. Really nice, really high quality board. I can tell right away from by looking at it. So at this point in the video, guys, go ahead and make this full screen so you can see this overview of the Betaflight F4. Uh, pretty nice board layout here. It looks a little more complicated than some of the other boards I've seen. Um, and they do some strange stuff by putting the boot button up here and the USB here. Normally what we'd like to see is the boot button for flashing the firmware is next to the USB. So it's on the outside rail because the way they have it configured here, if it's a on, uh, it's going to be a little harder to access. You're going to have to get something in there to push that button down when you're flashing, reflashing the firmware on here. So um, that's one thing to think about. Now I'll go ahead and start with the F4 chip right here in the middle. You have your directional arrow right there and that's forward left right and the back of the board and the very back along this rail this top one right here is going to be your ground for where your battery wire goes it comes on and solders on just right there just like that and just below it you have your positive wire leading off to your battery and your xt60 setup is going to come out right there now this is a pretty standard 30.5 millimeter hole to hole mounting point right here uh, all the way around in square and so for hooking up your motors this is the way you're going to do it m1 is down here so your signal wire is going to come up to here m1 rx1 and your ground wire right there. Motor number two is gonna go here, motor number three, motor number four is up on these three tabs right here. And they're kind of hard to see these labels, so some of you guys might need a magnifying glass to get in there and really read some of these labels. And if I flip this over just underneath is where your positive and negative wire is gonna come off from your ESCs right there, the larger wire. And these correspond to each side. If you look just underneath where the signal wire goes, you'll see the positive and negative terminals there. And they're not coded um, by shape. Sometimes the positive will be a round pad and the negative will be a square pad, but both of these are gonna be square. So make sure you pay attention to the layout, positive and negative. It's pretty clearly labeled on the bottom. It looks good here. But the screening on the top is just a little bit hard to read. Now also along this rail, we have some more hookups here for ground, five volt, RX3 and TX3 for whatever type of, uh, if you want to run this on UART 1, 2, or 3, you have TX1 here, you have RX1, 5 volt, and ground here. And over here just below the USB cable, we have our positive here and ground here, and that's for your buzzer. And they did use the square and circular setup right there. So a circle for positive, a square for negative. Now we have one, two, three, four, five rails right here, and each of these can do different things. Up at the very top, we have video in, video out. We have camera and signal wire right on there on the J3 line. 
and this furthest one over to the right, you might not see in the schematic, but these are all square. So these are all going to be ground on this rail right here, this far end rail. Now the next row down is J5 and it runs right across here. There's four different tabs right here. There's TX2, RX2, 5 volt and ground here. Up next is J1. That J1 row is where your LEDs are going to go. So you have your LED on the far left, 5 volt, and where your ground wire goes for your LEDs. Next down is J13. And that's almost the last row here. We have PPM, S bus, 5 volt, and ground right there. Uh, S bus or PPM if you'd like. Most people are running S bus these days. And on the very bottom rail, we have J14. And that's this last rail, just three holes there. And that's for your. DSM2 hookups. So this will give you 3.3 volt. You have your signal wire there, 3.3 volt here and ground right there. And it doesn't show you any type of labeling on the top because they just didn't have enough room to put that right here. But if you flip this guy over and you're, if you're bringing your wires in from the bottom, you can start down here like this. And if you want to keep your board nice and clean, run your wires underneath and up through like this and you can trim the top part off just a little bit really carefully with some snips but on the very bottom it's nice if you look at this board you can see that things are pretty clearly labeled here and you might again you might have to use a magnifying glass to see these labels but everything is clearly labeled from top to bottom but if you want the latest and greatest on your five inch the betaflight f4 is definitely a nice board and in conjunction with the betaflight branded 32-bit BL Heli 35 amp ESCs. I think you're going to have a pretty nice combo there. Let me find one that's I've already opened and I'll show you guys. It does come with a pack of wires in there and some extra smaller wires as well. I've already taken some of these out of here. And those are the larger wires that I was showing you guys hook up to the bottom here, positive and negative. And this is your ESC right here. Let me just give you a little bit of a close-up this ESC. I'm definitely going to be building this, but this is a phenomenal looking piece of hardware. Look at this up close and personal. This is a really nice, nice layout. There are larger chips there. Man, look at that. That's beautiful soldering on this board. So this is pretty simple to hook up and solder up these wires. Now you're going to have positive here and it's pretty clearly labeled again positive on this side and negative on this side you've got your ground and your signal wire there and running out to your motor these three wires right here in no particular order really if you have a motor direction that you don't like you can just switch that in, inside bl heli so pretty cool this is a definitely a high speed esc one of the highest rated escs out there on the hobby market right now it's the 32 bit ESC so super fast very smooth and responsive and uh, it's gonna make your motors run a lot quieter some of those older one-shot ESCs but you're more than likely safe to run this on 4 to 5s uh, 35 amp you you're definitely gonna be able to do a 5s setup with these ESCs so uh, these are pretty sweet I'll definitely check these out but let's go ahead and check out the X racer now because I can't wait to get this out of the box for you guys now this is a 90 millimeter racer so you're gonna be running two inch props on this little guy and uh, they give you all ton of props in here check this out you get tons of little gems van 2035 props in this bag and uh, pretty sweet because I went through quite a few props playing around with this quad and it's pretty smooth right off of the bat with the stock data flight pits it wasn't too bad I think it needs maybe a little bit of tuning but these props make things a lot nicer now they also did a nice job of getting this quad in there and such a small package is pretty cool it does have a little strap in here to keep it held down and the VTX is tucked backwards here you can see this VTX sticks out the back you might want to take a piece of a zip tie and kind of stand this up it'll give you a much better signal but the official name on their site for this one is the KLEX90 that's the official X racer name I think it used to be labeled X racer but it's pretty stout this little guy has a three millimeter bottom plate down here and a three millimeter top plate so a lot of these quads that I've seen this year they're not running three millimeter top plates so and this it's really nice that they also included a run cam micro in here and they have it really nicely they have a little TPU printed hard mount in here and it keeps it protected really well at the front impact point and this is where I've been having a lot of problems this year and I've been mentioning this to other manufacturers the fact that the bottom of the run cam micro sticks out on a lot of frames uh, like the R90 from Diatone this one does not it has it nicely shielded there is a hole there for a little bit of airflow but it's nicely protected and I don't think I'm going to have any danger of really 
breaking this camera. Um, it is exposed on the side, but this is a pretty nice way to, uh, to sandwich this in there and, and keep it well protected. And I gotta make a comment on the carbon fiber on this little guy. This thing is really nice looking carbon fiber. It's beveled edges on here. It doesn't feel rough or sharp like some of the other frames out there. I did lose one bolt off the bottom of the motor you can see here. So go through all these bolts. Whenever you get something that's sort of a, a, a bind and fly, go ahead and make sure that your bolts are there. Look at that, I'm also missing two bolts on the bottom of the flight controller. So. Um, that's not super cool. Now I flew this one probably without checking all those or tightening them down. That that can happen to you and if you get a flight controller that might be kind of freaking out, it might be missing bolts and that's exactly why because the gyros having little micro vibrations coming from the power system and just kind of annoying the gyro so that's not good. On the very back of the quad we have another TPU mount right here and this is kind of protecting inside where this connects on and if i was you guys some way i would take a little zip tie and just zip tie it off the arm because a lot of times these batteries get yanked off and they will pull these tiny little tabs off these micro stacks right off and then you'll have to replace this entire esc so once these little metal tabs are gone there's no way to fix it now the vtx on this guy i showed you this before how this antenna comes off the back this is a dipole and this is 48 channels on this and this is 25 milliwatt it's called the dragonfly i, I kind of like to see that um this was somehow maybe they had an led on here and uh, maybe that it was 200 milliwatt I, I would like to see that for the price of this quad that i get 200 milliwatt i think that's a better value you can take this one off and obviously you have plenty of room in the top of this frame to put something else here um, some of the other btx's on the market like i showed from hglrc those those are pretty small and you can probably add that on the top of the stack somewhere possibly in here but this is not a whole lot of room you can see the band button right here and the channel button just below the frame up on the top over on the left hand side we have the channel leds one through eight right there on the left hand on the right hand side we have our bands this is a b e f and r bands right there and just below the vtx i have my xm plus antenna coming off right up the top there and i have plenty of room for the vtx and the receiver just to go underneath that so that's pretty cool this was built around the VTX. I've never really seen that before in a quad frame design. That's kind of cool. Now the power system and the flight controller in here, this is the Raptor S tower. And I've seen this one before uh, on brushless micros. And we have some Dragonfly branded motors here. It says micro class just below the Dragonfly logo. And these are 7,500 KB. These are 1104 motors and they're nice anodized aluminum, sort of a purple color there looks pretty decent and they have traditional mounting points so they're not proprietary prop mounts and they say you can run a 2 to 3s on this this is a 12 amp esc bo heli combo down here and you can see the wires are nicely soldered up this is different than some of the other quads i've seen come in lately this one looks like it's nicer built than some of the other ones along the bottom here you can see that each wire is soldered on the bottom and they come in from the bottom instead of coming around the outside and on the top which i think is really nice that's kind of a nice detail about this quad's uh, construction from the factory And aside from all the other good stuff on here, you have an OSD, which is great. And you probably can go in here and make some changes on your camera, but it looks like it's gonna be a little harder to get that OSD cable in the very back back here. You might have to pop the top and take this mount off to uh, get to the run cam OSD there. I think they, yeah, it looks like you guys are gonna have to do that if you wanted to mess around with your brightness contrast ratios on your, your micro swift here. But you can bind this up with any DSMX transmitter, FR Sky or Fly Sky transmitter out there. So it's pretty compatible with a lot of different radios on the market. I think for what it is and the components on here and the size that it is, I think the price is a little bit higher than some of the other Chinese companies. Uh, but then again, you can buy this one domestically because they do ship from the US. So that's um, probably one of the main differences in price point for this. And um, the frame might be a little nicer here than some of the other ones I've seen. So beveled edges and pretty nice weave in this uh, 3K carbon fiber on the bottom of this quad. 
but I had a lot of fun flying this one. I think it's pretty quick and nimble and zippy and small enough to make it through even the tiniest of gaps. If you do get into brushless micro, you're gonna start exploring some areas and some flight places, some flight zones that you've never even dreamed of. So it's kind of cool. You can search out new spots and a lot of people don't even notice you're flying these things. They're so tiny and so quiet compared to a five inch. That's why I love brushless micro. It really is um, kind of a lot less annoying to the public. So thanks again for watching this review guys i'm justin davis i hopefully you enjoyed the new stuff from fpv model and uh, i hope to get some more stuff from them because i think they got some really neat stuff on their site so i'll put the links down below for fpv model and thanks again as always for watching another quality review from the drone camps channel i'm justin davis see you on the next one